welcome everyone to Transformers for your listening pleasure, Fall of Cybertron Spoiler Edition. I am Weird Wolf. Along with me is Natsume Ryu. Hello. And Sideburn 2. Hello. And you don't get to see me in real time. <laughs> um, we're trying a little bit uh, something new tonight. We're... Uh, uh, this is going to be an add-on to our podcast that we recorded night before last. Um, it's going to include some spoilers that we know about uh, in Fall of Cybertron coming up. And uh, uh, so everything that you hear from here on out, if you've been avoiding news and everything for uh, the game Fall of Cybertron, uh, you may not want to listen to this uh, if you don't want to be spoiled. Uh, but if you're listening live, and uh, we hope that you are, uh, this is a live recording of uh, Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure, and uh, we are a weekly podcast uh, put out by GeekExistence.com, and uh, if you haven't checked us out, uh, go to GeekExistence.com, uh, find a uh, repository of our old podcasts, as well as on iTunes, and if you like what you hear, um, Feel, uh, feel free to share it, and uh, please review us. Uh, so without further ado, uh, we'll get right into the Fall of Cybertron stuff here. Uh, Natsume, you want to kick it off with uh, some talk about uh, single player? Single player, right. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the thing we know about the trophies, because that is um, possibly one of the better... Um, I guess it's it's a good place to start. Um, so we know, first of all, that there are 13 levels in single player. Uh, the first level is Bumblebee. Um, and as far as we know, he does not have any special abilities because he does not have, like every other chapter, has a trophy for, or in the case of the Xbox players, an, what is it, an achievement, um, for not only completing the chapter, but there's also usually one for doing something special. Um, and usually it happens to pretty much give away who the character is in that level. But we, we know that Moby is the first level. And for the second and third level, both of those appear to be Optimus. The first one is... I want to say it's basically... That's all, all up until you get to Metroplex, and then the third level is when you actually get Metroplex and you get that ability to use the airstrike. Um, fourth level is Cliff Jumper, and we know that he has the ability to become uh, a cloaker. He's an in, becomes invisible. Fifth level is Jazz. Since we know that Cliff Jumper and Jazz are working together, it would make sense that the, the levels would transition between the two. Um, and his ability is a grappling hook, and he uses apparently a sniper rifle, or you basically you get an achievement for shooting a sniper with a scoped weapon. Um, level 6, as we know from the demo and from the achievements, is Vortex. They have the fun trophy called the Car Wash of Doom for destroying all the homing mines chasing Blast off, uh, which is the, part the, of the demo we got to play. The icon for that needs to be a rat bat. I hope so. <laughs> That's gonna be that'll be funny. I I mean I I probably should have just been reading the the trophies. Let me go back. All right. So Bumblebee's trophy is the Exodus, complete chapter one, um, chapter two, defend the Ark, complete chapter two, and the Last Stand, save two Autobots when Optimus is down by the first Leaper. So I think a Leaper is obviously a kind of enemy, AI enemy. Uh, chapter three, Metroplex heeds the call. That's just for completing Chapter 3. And then Carnage in C Major. Uh, take out a cluster of five Decepticons using Metroplex's airstrike. Chapter 4, Cliff Jumper's level, Eye of the Storm. Uh, you get that for completing the level. And his achievement for ability-wise is Invisibility Spray. Sneak through the, cr the trash compactor facility undetected. Um, we also know that, based on some of the videos we've seen, that Cliff Jumper and Jazz are basically there. Part of the level is in the Sea of Rust. Um, so that's going to be exciting. That's one of the places I can't wait to see um, in-game, because it's something that I've just always wanted to see ever since I saw it on the map of Cybertron. <laughs> mm. um, Jazz's are cut and run, just for completing the level, and Target Master 2.0, shoot a sniper out of the air with a scoped weapon. 
Vortex's trophies are Death from Above, which is just for completing the chapter, and Car Wash of Doom, destroying all the homing mines, chasing Blast off before they self destruct. Chapter 7, I have not confirmed which character it is, but based on the website, which shows basically it. On every one of the characters that we know is in single player, those have abilities next to their name. All the other characters only have Autobot or Decepticon next to their name. So both Swindle and Soundwave are given abilities in the um, website. Um, and I have not found a level for each of them individually. So this level could be Swindle or Soundwave. It's called Belly of the Beast. And the trophy... Um, not just for completing it, but actually doing it, is Club Con ram a jet on the ground or in the air. And since both of them are trucks, or uh, whatever you want to call them, the, the leaders, the destroyers, uh, I think that would make sense for either one of them. But I don't believe either one of them has ram as an ability. I think it's just basically when you're driving the car, when you're actually holding down the button to drive instead of strafing as a vehicle. Um, chapter 8, as we know, is Bruticus. One of the reasons I think Chapter 7 is Swindle is because of the Vortex level, then it goes to, then it would go to Swindle, then it would go to Bruticus. Um, I don't think it would make sense to have Soundwave, but, uh, like I said, it does give Soundwave an ability on the website, and that his ability is, believe it or not, to deploy the Minicons. Well, they call them Minicons on the website, you know, the cassettes. <laughs> yeah, they call them Minicons, I'm pretty sure. Blast you, Armada. Yeah. <laughs> They're all getting retconned in the mini-cons. Um, all right, so Chapter 8, Bruticus. The, the chapter is called Combaticons Combine. And the trophy you get for doing something special is Fusilateral Quintro Combiner. Melee an enemy through the goalpost. That one just sounds a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't wait to try that just because I'm like, oh, I wonder what that's going to look like. I want to try that now. Wait, goalpost? Is there a yes. football field on the game? <laughs> that's what I want to know. <laughs> no, it's a lobbing field. <laughs> oh, I just love, I also love the name of that trophy. Use a lateral Quintro combiner. It's a really big word. <laughs> Chapter 9. That and means absolutely two. nothing. Well, it means, <laughs> yeah, you know, Quintro 5. So he's a combiner of 5. And then Fusilateral suggests that they obviously they, they combine. So, But it's just complicated for nothing. <laughs> chapter 9 and Chapter 10, just like Optimus got Chapter 2 and Chapter 3, Chapter 9 and Chapter 10, I'm pretty sure, are both Megatron. Um, the first one is called I, Robot Master. That's Chapter 9. Um... Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's called Megatron Returns. And I, Robot Master, is the trophy you get for destroying all the images of Starscream and his statues. <laughs> Chapter 10 is called The Final Countdown. And... Da -da -da -da. Yes. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. And the trophy is called The Harder They Die. Uh, kill five Autobots with a single hover slam attack. And I know that's Megatron because we know his, his ability is a hover slam attack. So Maybe chapter Megatron nine returns is Soundwave. You think so? I thought that was possible. I think that's possible. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna change that on here. There we go. Because it, it would kind of make sense, you know, Soundwave being the Megatron loyalist. Yep. I just thought it seemed a little odd that Optimus would get two levels. Well, maybe I don't know how I don't could know. Chapter he's two? Optimus Prime, of course. I'm just guessing. Yeah. Because I guess Chapter 2 could be something else, but we don't know who it is. It's save two Autobots when Optimus is downed by the first Leaper. Oh, then you got to be someone else for your saving. Well, no, no. Optimus could be down and you could still be helping people, but uh, it would make more sense to be a different character. Yeah. I want to go ahead and knock that out. It might be Bumblebee. Maybe he actually gets a, an ability or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. There. So, so number two, we don't know. Number nine, we're, we're changing to Soundwave, which would make a little bit more sense. Um, so chapter 11 is Starscream's level. It's called Starscream's Betrayal, and the trophy you get is Internal Affairs. Hack all of the security terminals before the Decepticons can activate them. Um, I pretty much, I just, I figured that was the Starscream's level because number one, we know we play as him. And number two, because the next level, level 12, is Grimlock's level, and I know that we trans, we trans, 
uh, for when from playing Starscream to Grimlock. So pretty much had to be the level before Grimlock. Yeah. Uh, so chapter 12 is called Grimlock Smash. Ha, 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 ha. Um, slap the Grimlock is the trophy you get for killing a leaper in the air with an explosive barrel. So basically, oh, so leaper then would be an insecticon. Wouldn't it? Yeah, because you have to fight a bunch of insects. Mm. That would make sense. Yeah. It'd be the uh, kickback class. Mm. Yeah, that would make sense. All right, and chapter 13, you get to play as Optimus or Megatron. Because both trophies, they still only have two trophies for this level, but both of them are called Till All Are One. One has Megatron in parentheses, the other one has Optimus in parentheses. And both of them have complete Chapter 13 as, and then one has Megatron, the other has Optimus. So that's Chapter 13. That's going to be very interesting to see if the, the, the ending changes it at all, or if you're just basically playing it from a different perspective. Yeah. That's going to be very interesting. Definitely means all of us are going to be going back and playing that level twice. <laughs> yep, at least. I'll, I know I'll probably play the whole game twice. I'll probably play it the first time on normal, second time on hard. And we'll, we'll see which one I do first. I don't know. Hmm. I want straight at it, playing on hard. You do it, man. You do it. I like to do it normal because then I can slow down and I can look at stuff without having to worry about dying. If it was something like, you know, you, got, you have some games that have four difficulties, and, you know, the fourth mm -hmm. difficulty is, like, and cr yeah. you know, crazy difficult. And you, you can't then even I would, unlock it until you play it on hard yeah. first. Then I would play that on the third. You know, I'd play that on the hard, and then, you know, play, maybe try Insane later. Usually those games make it impossible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah I, I usually just go in and I play it on the hardest difficulty. That's what I did with War for Cybertron. We are streaming live on uh, YouTube, and uh, if uh, you're listening, uh, I'm keeping an eye on any of the uh, comments that are left, so if you have any comments or questions uh, that you might want us to talk about here on the uh, uh, podcast, uh, feel free to post them on there, and we'll see if we can discuss them uh, on the podcast live. Uh, now, the uh, did we cover all of the... Uh, all of the trophies now? Uh, that's all the single player trophies, not including the ones you get for completing the campaign and collecting the uh, different things. So let me go down to that real quick. The The other campaign ones, uh, Beachcomber is the name of it. It's for collecting all the blueprints, which those are the ones that a blueprint, after you collect it, it, ad it adds that weapon to the Teletrans store. So you can act now buy that weapon um, from the store the next time you access it. Um, Cassetticon audio file is the other one. That's for collecting all the audio logs. Um, Monica's spender. I'm assuming that's what that is. I don't know what that reference is. If you want to enlighten me afterwards, uh, it's spend two hundred fifty thousand energon in the Teletran one store. So I'm sure you'll probably spend that just buying everything. Um, the battle is far from over, and complete campaign easy. More than meets the eye, complete campaign normal, and all hail you, complete campaign hard. And those are all the campaign ones. The others are multiplayer and escalation trophies. Um, Boy, the so Do we lose everybody? I don't know. You, you're, it looks like your video is frozen. Oh, it should be. Uh, it, it looks like it's working for me. Okay, yeah. it's just me then. Stupid it's Google. just a little bit laggy. <laughs> I think that's the nature of video. But, okay. uh, uh, Cyber, you want to briefly uh, tell us about the multiplayer aspect of it? Well, I'm not sure this much. Uh, I guess the big thing we didn't talk about, yes, the, the last time we recorded was uh, Escalation, um, which... Um, I think what we really know about it is, uh, so, you know, Escalation, of course, like War for Cybertron, you get to play as all the, uh, all the cons and Autobots as themselves, not as your repaint or amalgamation of parts. Um, this time around, though, instead of having the, uh, the abilities they would have had in the campaign, they actually get new abilities or different abilities to 
balance them out and have them work as like a class-based system. Um, I'm not. Other than that, I don't know. Natsume probably actually knows more about escalation than I do, because um, I I can't remember all the new stuff they talked about for it. They kind of held that one close to their chest, haven't they? They have not revealed too much about it. We pretty much we got one really good video about escalation. Um, a lot of the basic things, and that was pretty much the only reveal we got. So it does show a lot of the different things that they changed about escalation. Uh, so a lot of the things are staying the same. First and foremost, there is it only goes up to 15 waves. It pretty much it, I think I think in War for Cybertron you could go up to like. 79 waves, I think, was the, the highest anyone's ever gotten or something, or someone said that was the end. Um, you can only go up to 15 waves in Escalation. Um, after that, it pretty much, you've, oh, you've beaten that, that, that level or whatever in Escalation. Um, another thing, they have the same, same thing in single player that I mentioned about them having those little random... Uh, lockers, like where you can basically you put in 250 Energon chips and you get a random item. It could be really good or really bad. Um, they have those in Escalation as well as single player. Those are a nice addition. Uh, just like single player, the weapons are still segregated between the normal and the heavy weapons, not like multiplayer. Um, so you have to pick up different ammo. Oh, the ammo is limited. It, it, you do not have to buy it. It automatically respawns, but it only respawns either once every wave or once every so often. I could not tell if it was timed or if it was every wave. I was not able to discern that. But they did make a point of saying that ammo is limited, so you basically you have to communicate. They did that to force you to communicate with your teammates to figure out who needs ammo, you know, or you have to communicate with your teammates and say, okay, I am really running low on ammo. How are you guys doing? Does anybody need it more than me? Or what, you know, what else? Um, something else they did, on the Autobot side and the Decepticon side, they have made it so that basically they're equivalents to character classes on both sides. So Optimus and Megatron both have the same ability in Escalation, and that is the holding a shield ability. Um, Bumblebee and Starscream both have the same ability, which is placing down like that ammo beacon thing. I, f I still don't know what it's called, but it's that little thing that you have in multiplayer. Ammo um, beacons sound cool. Yeah, but it's that's basically what it is. It just looks different, and they click, they gave it a different name. Um, Shockwave and I believe Ratchet have the same ability, and that's the repair ray. And the fourth and final ability, I don't think we have had shown I think it was Soundwave is yeah Soundwave is the other Decepticon that they showed um, they didn't play as him but they showed that he was available in Escalation and I do not remember if they showed what his ability was man um, so what we have not been shown because they they basically this was long enough ago that this was before we they ever decided to do dino add Dinobots to um, the multiplayer, and basically before we learned about a lot of different characters, this was before they had all the reveal trailers and a whole bunch of other stuff, and they showed us what the Insecticons looked like. Um, they haven't shown if there are going to be more than those characters. Because of the fact that they are restricting, they are basically forcing characters to be a class for the purposes of making you guys play as a team, I am... I'm a little bit worried that they aren't going to have like all of the character skins available like they did in War for Cybertron. Um, I mean, it makes it it makes sense that it would say, okay, well, you pretty much have even chances on the Autobot side and the Decepticon side because I'm pretty sure you can play um, all three of the maps that they have trophies for on either Autobot or Decepticon side. So you, the, the maps are no longer segregated between Autobots and Decepticons. Even though the enemies, I believe, do still change between... Obviously, for the Autobots, it's the Insecticons, and for the Decepticons, I want to say it's something else. But it may be the same for both of them. It may just be the Insecticons for both. 
Hmm. Um, sorry. It has been a while since I watched that that video. Like I said, that's really old news, and we haven't gotten anything else on it. Um, but I was a little bit worried that they aren't including all the characters for some reason. And they, because we don't even know how much they've you know withheld from us. I mean, recent yeah. trailers, re recent showings to show that they've withheld stuff from us already. Yeah. Uh, well, there was a trailer exciting. the other day that was posted, and just a few hours later, it was gone. You know, so. Is that the? Uh, is that the thirty-second spot that they? I believe so. Yeah. All right, because they they reposted it. Gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, I saw I know, it in uh, uh, recommended videos. And I have, oh. I'm subscribed to them. They have a 30 second, a 60 second, and a 90 second spot. And one of them showed up on one of the YouTube videos that I normally watch for my subscriber. I was like, I'm totally sitting through this commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I they had some to, cool uh, footage of the Dinobot of, uh, you know, Slug and Swoop coming in. <laughs> I refuse to call him Slug. I don't blame He is Slag. Uh, you just got to get used to it because he'll never beat Slag again. Uh no, he's going to be slag regardless of what <laughs> what his official name is. I'm a G one. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, I, 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 like can, say, I can see your point uh, about you know the shotgun slug you know stop things dead in their tracks, uh, but you know that slug is not the character's given name was not the original given name yeah. for that character it is slag so you know back i don't care they how they that. try to retcon it <laughs> back then they didn't know that europe was going to start using it as a derogatory term <laughs> so or they didn't care that europe used it as a derogatory term mm. yeah so but like at least it's not triceradon well, I, I'll, I'll sit back, play my Fall of Cybertron, uh, play as Slag, and smoke a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Take that, Europeans. No. <laughs> Seriously, though. Um, the uh, There are some spoilers, though, that some people may not um, be aware of if they haven't been following the, uh, the news and stuff. Um Let's go back to multiplayer. Or I'm, I'm sorry, uh, single player, uh, and talk about some of the uh, story plot lines that we do know so far. Uh, let's start with the big one. Um, a lot of people uh, were asking, why is uh, why are the Dinobots in the game? I mean, it's great that they are, but why do we have dinosaurs on Cybertron before? the Transformers ever go to Earth, you know, and we got kind of an explanation of that back at BotCon. Um, I believe Matt Teager uh, himself told us about it. Um, Matt, may you want to kind of tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, the, the story goes, as we've been led to believe by several store, uh, like things, that Hasbro was trying to they, they basically, they couldn't find a place for the Dinobots in the new continuity. Um, they thought that, you know, for whatever reason, they could not fit in with it. So Matt Teager um, and his team come together and they propose their, their storyline for Fall of Cybertron where Shockwave is investigating other planets, um, happens to find Earth at, you know, different periods in time in the the past, obviously the war takes place in the past, and I'm assuming for the sake of having the different dinosaurs, you know, the variety that they have, he has been watching them for some time. <laughs> um, he sees those designs. He captures the Strike Force Coalition, which then becomes the Dinobots. If you didn't know that, that's the Strike Force Coalition. Um, he, so he basically he captures Grimlock, Swoop, Sludge, Slug, Snarl. Um, he gives them these alt modes, and he basically, being the crazy, crazy scientist he is in this video game, has made it so that he wanted to control them. So they were not able to access these alternate modes without him giving the command. That is one of the reasons why Grimlock's ability is to transform, because it's not, it's not available to him except when he reaches that point of rage and all of a sudden he can, he can override that, that switch that Shockwave has implanted in him. Um, as far as I'm aware, the other Dinobots don't have a problem overrunning it, but I guess 
Also, as far as I'm aware, none of the Dinobots except Grimlock have a speech impediment, and apparently it is because Shockwave wanted to make Grimlock the most powerful weapon. Um, that's why he had the most problems transforming, he has a speech impediment, he has all kinds of problems. Um, because Shockwave basically took these Autobots, wanted to make them weapons, and it sort of was a failed experiment. Also, as far as we're aware, the Insecticons are also basically Shockwave's doing. Um, we don't know to what degree um, whether he's made them all or whatever, but we do know that they pretty much work together. And there's a lot of Insecticons at Shockwave's lab, and when Grimlock is escaping the lab, he pretty much has to deal with the Insecticons all the way out. Um, so all that, all throughout his level, you're pretty much you're fighting the Insecticons. Um, does that does that answer what you had set out for me to answer? And something Please sad happens to Sludge. Hey, oh, yeah. uh, uh, that's that's the one thing I'm not really looking forward to. I don't. Because um, <laughs> Sludge is actually, I would say Sludge is probably my favorite Dinobot. So lovable teddy bear. Yeah, I like to have been the Maximum Dinobots uh, comic. Yeah, he's he's probably my second favorite uh, Dinobot too. Snarl is my favorite <laughs> because of his alt mode. <laughs> Stego Stegosaurus fan. Yeah, I like Stegosauruses. They were they were always my favorite as a kid. So, well, Snarl wasn't Sunbow's favorite. Because they totally got rid of him in the movie. <laughs> mm, so what else do we want to talk about? Um, uh, what else? Oh, uh, we found out, basically, or at least I found out, based on one of the audio, um, audio recordings from Vortex's level in the demo, why Optimus and Megatron um, have new alt modes for this game? Because I I was hoping that they would explain it at least somewhat. I, I hate that they would just you know change modes and hey this is Optimus he he's you know bigger and bulkier and all kinds of crazy things. Um, uh, and it's supported by I believe the latest video they have out where they are talking about Megatron's level. I think yeah that that developer in that video touches on. Uh, Megatron getting a new alt mode and it is because apparently Optimus and Megatron have a big fight so basically both of them are damaged to the point where they had to end up reformatting into something else after after said fight so apparently they had heavy repairs or something and then they said okay I'm, I'm picking a new alt mode in case I have to fight him again <laughs> that kind of makes sense yeah um, and it, it meant, like I said, it mentions it in the Vortex level with uh, the audio recording where basically Megat or Optimus is the one in this one particular recording who's doing the talking. And he talks about, I wonder how the Decepticons are going to react being without a leader. So that suggests that sometime in between Warf Cybertron and Fall Cybertron, and there was a big fight, and Megatron was pretty much put out of commission, which explains why Starscream has... Um, you know, sort of tried to take the lead again, and why the one, the one uh, chapter nine is called Megatron Returns because apparently he went missing for a while. It kind of explains the sort of disunity we've kind of been seeing. Yeah, as well. especially like with Shockwave, sort of. He's in a sense, it seems like he's trying to build up an army or whatever, some sort of force to fight the Autobots with. He obviously doesn't think that Megatron is capable or the Decepticons, as they are, are capable. Um, yeah, and based on his bio on his, his card, I would assume that basically he's he's looking to take over the Decepticons, or at least he, he feels that he is more capable of taking down the Autobots for the purposes of saving Cybertron, or what, what have you. And a typical shot card you're handy somewhere. At least that is. Oh good, that's your shoulder, not, the, <laughs> not your upper thigh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm showing some leg here. <laughs> Where is that card? Oh, there it is. Oh. Look at the top of my head. I am bald. Shiny. Yes. The, the light. <laughs> yes. Blinded by um, the light. Yeah. 
I, I, as as you might have saw earlier in the podcast, I uh, I have followed Cybertron Shockwave here. He is pretty awesome. Um, his bio card here. Uh, briefly read it so that you know what we're uh, not somebody was uh, alluding to there. Uh, Shockwave may appear to be loyal to Megatron, but in reality, he serves only one master: pure logic. Behind the, his emotionless face rests a, br a mind of a brilliant strategist and mathematician. He calculates constantly and enforces his solutions through the precise application of the vast power of his laser cannon. So, yeah, um, basically he is plotting to overthrow the Decepticon or take control of the Decepticons uh, because, you know, he... Uh, everybody uh, plays Starscream as as the one that uh, wants to overthrow Megatron and take the Decepticons. But yeah, you know, Shockwave. Everybody always forgets about Shockwave, and it's and it's so cool that they throw Shockwave into the mix in this game. It's like, oh yeah, uh, there's this guy. Uh, he's like really, uh, really devious, and Megatron doesn't even realize it, or does he? I'm sure Megatron always realizes it. <laughs> Megatron's <laughs> keen on those kind of things, but he likes to play it. He likes to play it on the dangerous side. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Is there anything else that we really need to cover? Um, we know that Metroplex is in the game. Mm -hmm. Uh, from uh multiple uh and bigger things than any other. Transformer we've seen in the game so far. He like Unless towers. you include Cybertron. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But he towers over over Omega Supreme and Trips gone. If he was mm -hmm. to stand next to him, he's huge. Yeah. I mean he uh the the video that we saw uh showed him holding Optimus Prime in his hand and Optimus Prime looked like uh slightly larger than an ant. So <laughs> um that's pretty pretty flipping amazing. And of course you know, combiners. You know, we know that uh, they're in there because of uh, Bruticus. We're getting a toy of it. Well, many of us uh, who went to San Diego Comic Con probably already have one. Uh, I hear it's kind of crappy, but, you know, <laughs> hey, it's. At I least still get want Swindle one. for his card. Is uh, his bio card pretty cool? No, just the, the, the just render the... that they put on the front of the card is freaking fantastic. <laughs> kind of like. <laughs> Hey. Yeah, he's sort of like. So, hey there. I haven't seen that. I need to Google. He's like, this. you need to buy my toy. You know, he's selling his toy right I've there. I've got to find he's this. He's selling man. his toy. I have. Hold on. I'll make you a deal. <laughs> I really, I just, I really want to buy him just for that, and and because of that, and because I want brawl, just because I want brawl, I sort of want to get all of them just to have them all. So something I'm really looking forward to in the campaign is specifically the relationship between Starscream and the Combaticons because what we saw in Vortex's level was friggin' fantastic. Because um, they obviously have some sort of relationship with Starscream. We don't know if he actually made them in, in this continuity or not. Um, but they obviously have a relationship with Starscream. They don't, they don't necessarily respect him or anything, but just, I just love what we saw, the, the, the meshing of characters, and yeah. it's like, it just alludes to so much. I, I really can't wait to, to see everything. It's going to be really awesome. Yes. Um, I know we mentioned it earlier in the podcast, if you're listening to the downloaded version, and, but uh, for those of you who uh, are still kind of on the fence of this and wondering when it's released, it's uh, August 21st. So this coming Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, uh, if you pre-order it through GameStop, I know the uh, uh, the pre-order bonus pre-order bonus yeah is uh, G1 Optimus Prime skin. Um, what were the uh, other ones for? I know there's a G2 Bruticus if you pre-order it through Amazon. Uh, well, or, the the G1 Retro Buy? Pack for. GameStop is the G1 Optimus Prime skin for both single player and multiplayer, plus the Megatron pistol gun for single player and the Shockwave gun for single player. Um, the Amazon Predator bonus is G2 Bruticus for single player only. 
and one of the European pre-order bonuses is Swoop for multiplayer. Uh, I also think uh, Walmart. I think they're having a pre-order bonus where you get a download code for the original War for Cybertron for free. Oh, that's right. And Best Buy seems to be pre-order bonusless, which is kind of weird. Yeah. yeah, I made I made up that word pre-order bonusless. <laughs> it's a good word. Bonusless. <laughs> that sounds kind of dirty. He's bonusless. <laughs> Did you find it? <laughs> no, I, I actually Google search was fail. All uh, right, I'm gonna I'll find it. Yeah, if uh, we can only hope that at some point Swindle tries to sell the rest of the Compatagons. <laughs> that would be, uh, yeah, some of the fallen comrades he, he tries to sell them. That would be, <laughs> or sell parts of them, yeah. As he, uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't see it when it's down on the bottom one. I can only see it when it's up on top. What? I think it's my. You can click on just there, just there. Oh. So just that one person. Beaker Perfect. approves. Yes. Be Beaker wants you to buy Fall of Cybertron. <laughs> I. Uh... But uh, well, I. I guess we need to wrap this up here. Um, if you guys can think of anything else further that we need to discuss about uh, Fall of Cybertron and uh, any spoilers that we may know. Uh, I, I can't think of anything right off the top of my so head. So did, uh, did you guys try out some of the weapons through, the, uh, through those uh, canisters, whatever they are? Yes. Yes. No. I so have what, not played multiplayer. <laughs> did you get to try all the weapons? Oh, oh, no, single, player. single player. Oh, when it's you, a single player. Yeah, the two can access random most, generators. Yeah, you can oh. access most of the weapons. I, those, I probably picked if not one more. or two up, but I just didn't really. Yeah, I got the Nucleon yeah. sniper rifle the very mm -hmm. first time I bought it. Bought you know paid for it, and I was like, "Oh, the sniper's awesome!" <laughs> yep. It made the vortex level so much easier. Um. I got that one. I had the gear shredder at some point. There's the uh, burst rifle. The, the the scientist's gun is is just laying in that level. So I got to use that one. I got to use the clutch. Got to use that um, gravity thing. That's pretty cool. Um, that's that's the one that's an ability or whatever. You buy it and it goes down into your left right click. I think it's a left directional button one. Um, it basically just makes a little black hole in that area. So if you have like a bunch of enemies, you should just throw that up in the air, and it will basically just suck them all Dude, in. Oh, a little black nice. hole? That is totally Megatron's gun. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> I wonder if Megatron's gun becomes even more powerful if you can create that black hole. Because <laughs> did you re Have you ever read G1 Megatron's uh, tech spec? I have not. Uh, he can connect to a black hole and make his uh, cannon more uh, powerful. Oh, that's so, cool. That, that's kind of cool. Yeah, it's like throwing a single singularity. Mm -hmm. hey, you got some Mass Effect in my mind, in my <laughs> Minecraft, in my Transformers. Quantum singularity. So I got to try that one out. I did not try. I think the right directional buttons because I didn't want to buy them at the time. I didn't have the Energon form. Um, I tried. Uh, which ones have we gotten that we? I got the magma frag thing that we later got in multiplayer. Um, what are the other guns? Uh, the slime gun, tried that one. Uh, obviously the harvester. See, I have all these recorded, but I we, since we got so many of them in multiplayer now, which ones have we not played, do we know? I can't remember the names of them. You remember what they do? That'll help. I know there's a rocket. No, the rocket launcher we can use, can't we? Yeah, that's the destroyer. Starting destroyer weapons. Yeah, that one was laying around in that level. I don't know. Oh. I didn't pay enough attention to the weapons we can't unlock yet. I think I each class has unique weapons now, though, right? 
there's no crossing over. So far, as far as multiplayer goes, but I'm hoping that they're gonna with with full release of multiplayer that they're actually gonna throw in, you know, like cross over some of the weapons, just one or two, or or have more weapons that we haven't seen yet, because that would be just amazing. Yeah. But let's see. There's four classes, four weapons. So I mean, that's a lot of guns for a game. Yeah, twelve guns. But they still have, you know, they can they can throw in like they can take the uh, the assault rifle and make it not just the scientist's gun, but also maybe the destroyer's gun or whatever, just so he has some, uh, <laughs> something, something that doesn't rely on splash damage. Yeah, and you could you could probably give like I don't know the rocket launcher to the Titan and. You know, just things like that. Man, it's going to be a long weekend. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> I, I'm I'm really excited for this game. Um, you know, it's like I was playing this afternoon, and I, I wanted to play some of the demo, and I'm like, no, it just makes me want it that much more. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I hate teases. I hate teases. You know, I want. I, I, I'm surprised they even got the demo. Because, um, you know, I, I really like to have the wonder of the game revealed. And if I want to play more, I can keep playing more because I have the whole game. And demos don't give you that. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Um, well, I guess we, we didn't talk about the multiplayer trophies. That sort of gives us some stuff. Um, okay. Well, we know Prime Mode is coming back. Uh, one of the trophies is called Ballistic Energon Goodie. It's called Return Five Heads at Once in a Headhunter Game During the Public Multiplayer Match. That one sounds fun. Um, Chop Shop, Purchase All Weapons and Perks. Pretty easy. Basically, it tells you you're going to have to buy stuff. You can't just unlock it by leveling up. Uh, and you see, basically, if you're playing multiplayer in the demo right now, you see that you get a thousand Energon chips just for every every match that you complete. So... That's, that would be one way to uh, get your stuff so you can buy stuff. Uh, next trophy is Full Throttle Scramble Power. Earn MVP in any game mode during a public multiplayer match. And I've only seen at once in the entire game, and this was like the first one of the first matches I played in multiplayer. I think it was the first match I played in multiplayer on the demo. I saw one person, they had a little MVP above their head. I have not seen it since. I don't know if they took it out of the demo or what. Um, but yeah, so basically, it's the same thing as like uh, Revenge of the Fallen or War of Cybertron, where be, if you get like the highest score, you'll be the MVP. Hmm. Um, Headmaster is reach max level in a single class. I'm pretty sure they still have the level limit at 25, based on what we've seen in videos. Uh, heavy Metal War kills six different opposing players in a team deathmatch game during a public multiplayer match. Gotta love the G1 references in these names. Yeah. King of the Scrap Heap, reach max level in all four classes. Master Builder, fully upgrade all weapons. So, like like we found out, you can't upgrade weapons. I don't know if that means just buying all of the perks for the weapons, or if there's going to be, like, you can increase the damage for a weapon, or the reload time for a weapon, aside from the perks. Yeah, because so far, all we've seen is you get to add one perk. To, maybe, maybe it's unlocking all the perks. Yeah, maybe. Um... Don't know. Um, Moonbase One. Personally, capture all three nodes in the Conquest game game during a public multiplayer match. Uh, reconfiguration Matrix. Create a custom character in multiplayer. That'll be really easy to get <laughs> the first time you go on. Yes, I got a trophy. <laughs> Reconstructor. Fully upgrade one weapon. See, it's got these fully upgrade one weapon. You have to be able to upgrade these things. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's not the same as single player. You know what? I think those. I think those two trophies are single player because we know you can upgrade weapons in single player. I probably just put them in this, the wrong section. So those are single player. Okay. That we know, would make more sense. Yeah, and you can <laughs> you can get all. They're basically the same perks as in multiplayer, but you can unlock them all on the same gun at the same time. So. Because I've done that on one of the guns in in the demo. Um. Teletran 1 regular. Rate all weapons, weapon upgrades, and equipment. I'm pretty sure that's a single player one too because you know you can rate weapons and stuff in a single player. So yeah. I wonder, how the, I wonder if that like shares the rating with the rest of the people on your friends list or 
Did they it, it, elaborate on that? It shares. It basically it goes into. It combines with all the ratings that everybody else has given the gun, and it gives it an overall rating that everybody will see any time they look at the gun in Teletrend One. Because uh. if you if you go on the demo right now, you'll be able to see the ratings um, on the on the different weapons that you I have unlocked. Yeah, I didn't pay much attention. I, think I got I went to Teletrend once. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and you can you can also rate it after you buy it. I have done that since I I bought one of the guns out of there, and I was like, oh, I can I can rate it now, and I give it a nice rating and <laughs> just to try it out. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, Ultimate Menasaur. capture three flags in a single capture the flag game during a public multiplayer match, and uh, what Prime directives unlock Prime mode. So yeah, we know we get Prime mode back. Which is essentially like prestiging, I guess, yeah. and call and of I'm, Duty. I'm pretty sure that's what's. I'm pretty sure that the elite heads are either going to be available after you unlock Prime or after you max out every character in Prime mode, which would be pretty cool. Because it'd be like the ultimate thing would be putting that head on your character. That would make it sort of you know, I don't mind having you know Bumblebee's head with a crown on my character if it means that I've on um, I've maxed out every possible thing. <laughs> And then everyone would be like, shoot the person with the crown. <laughs> well, it's like... And hate it's like them the for it. <laughs> people on Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3, you had to, like, get 100% on the entire game, including, you know, beating hardcore mode and getting all the trophies to be able to get this one skin um, that was one of the skeletons or whatever. And people were playing that, like, on the first day that the game was released. And it's like, I can't believe you have the entire game at this point. And everybody was just like killing this because it's like you've been playing all day <laughs> to be able to get all that unlocked. That or you're a cheater. <laughs> yeah. That's highly possible. Oh, yes. And then the Escalation trophies are Ultra Power Master. Spend 100,000 credits in Escalation. Octopunch Scavenger. Open 15 Armory Recreators in Campaign or Escalation. I think the armory creators. I think that's the name of what the uh, random things are. Yeah. Uh, Macadam's old oil house is complete wave fifteen in escalation map downfall. So there are four maps so far. Uh, Robot Opossum is complete wave fifteen in ignition. Rust Marks is <laughs> complete wave fifteen in ancients. <laughs> and Space Pirates is complete wave fifteen in oblivion. You got rust marks all on your skid plate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, you're leaking some oil. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of those commercials where they have the people represented as like little pipe things. You're like, are you yeah. worried about your pipes leaking? <laughs> oh, gosh. Don't show your rust marks. <laughs> oh. All right. Um, well, I guess the rest of it, um, probably in our next podcast after this one, uh, we'll discuss our initial thoughts of it. Uh, I'm sure uh, one or more of us will have possibly even beaten the game by then. Um, but we'll we'll discuss the game a little bit more in detail as a whole um, in our initial, uh, well, our, our thoughts of it. Um, without spoiling it all. <laughs> yeah. Because um, right now, everything we're talking about is pretty much going by what we know uh, from news and also from the demo. And the demo can only tell you so much. But um, I guess, like I said, we need to, we really need to wrap this up because uh, this podcast has gone really long, especially <laughs> hours after we had this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, we hope you've enjoyed this, and if you like the uh, uh, the live broadcast, um, I, I've noticed we've had uh, a few uh, listeners, live listeners here, um, and we appreciate you uh, joining in with us. Um, if you have any questions, comments during the podcast as we're recording. Uh, feel free to uh, post them up there on YouTube, and I'll uh, I'll keep a tab on them. And uh, and if if we can fit it into the podcast, we'll mention you and uh, 
ask your question and discuss it. Um, we're going to try to do this a lot more often, uh, especially with our podcasts. Um, is if it it seems a little bit more interactive and uh, a little little more proactive with uh, uh, our geekdom. Uh, check out geekexistence.com and our forums over there. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and also find us on Facebook. Like us on there. Uh, we are also on Google Plus, uh, obviously here on. Uh, uh, Google Hangouts, which is what, which is what we're using. Uh, I'm on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me, Weird Wolf, at Weird Wolf 1975. I'm actually, that's my gamer tag. I keep getting that confused. I am at Weird Wolf 75. Um, do you guys have a Twitter account you want to mention? At Natsume Ryu. Pretty easy. And to make mine confusing, it's at iBloodstorm I. <laughs> Capital. Yeah, because that's my that's what I go by in most games. So if you see an eye bloodstorm eye shooting you in the head, that's me. Hmm. And know that I enjoy shooting you in the head, and I feel no remorse. That's, <laughs> that's terrible. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> well, thanks again for uh, joining us and check us out uh, on our uh, all of our uh, outlets that we have, and. Uh, Join us next week for another edition of Transformers for Your Listening Pleasure. I am Weird Wolf, along with Natsume Ryu. Goodbye! And Cyburn 2 slash I Bloodstone Y. I'm waving my hands, but you can't see them. I wave for <laughs> you. See, this is your arm over here. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>